why don't we have quantum computers yet? What is taking us or what has taken what has taken us so long? Anyone can start. Maybe Joe. Sure, I'll jump in. Okay, yeah, Chris, go, oh, please. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> I'll, no, I'll, go. I'll be very brief. Oh, no. I'll I'm be very brief. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna <laughs> weigh in on this. <laughs> yeah, we, re we, we rely on theorists to, to tell us what these things will be good for. Um, uh, so so I, I think the answer to your question has to do with uh, the exotic nature of this type of computing. It's really nothing like, it's just not the next generation of our uh, standard processor. It sort of uh, 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 makes an end run around Moore's law by changing the laws of physics for computing. Now these laws, again, we can have a six hour lecture on the laws of quantum physics, I suppose, but um, uh, they're quite exotic in the sense that they, they don't have analogies in, in everyday life. The idea of superposition, you could do things with multiple states at the same time with one device, sort of like parallel processing with one processor. And the, the, um, the, the uh, uh, requirements on systems to be able to show that behavior is they, that they be extremely isolated from the environment because if you look at it while it's computing it just gets destroyed and i don't just mean a conscious being looking at it but any unwanted interaction with the environment okay so in uh, say john's system that means really cold temperatures almost absolute zero the systems i work with individual atoms i'm sure we'll talk more about the differences in you know, contrasts uh, in our systems, they're in a vacuum chamber, so um, the atoms are uh, not uh, uh, connected to the environment because there's a vacuum in between. Uh, so there's always some type of exotic feature that, uh, that, that allows the system to be quantum. And the hardest thing is, okay, we've isolated it. Now we have to control it without looking. Uh, that's possible, but very, very difficult. So it's going to require uh, extreme uh, techniques uh, in engineering to, to, to really get these devices uh, working. So that's why we don't have one now. Uh, I will uh, 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 put the onus on people like Joe. We need more we need more apps. Of course, he'll say, well, we need machines to run the apps. And this is, this is why the field's beautiful. I think it's a big community. Everybody's working together uh, to make this happen, both on the algorithm side and people like me on the hardware side, building devices me and Joe. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a great question. Of, of course, in, in some ways, you can say uh, we already have uh, quantum computers. Um, they're, you know, they're just not very, uh, very good yet. Uh, people are already making, uh, I mean, including I, I, I and Q, uh, you know, in, in making uh, prototype quantum processors that you can access in the cloud. You can uh, write algorithms for them, uh, get back the answer. Uh, and some, some of them have even uh demonstrated this uh this thing called quantum supremacy where they, they've been shown to be impossible to uh to emulate to, to uh using um even the the most advanced uh computers that we have on the planet so you know i i think uh, i agree uh you know critically they're not yet uh you at a scale that's useful to solve problems but um you know things have come a, a long way from the types of experiments that chris talked about you know demonstrating entanglement between two qubits towards you know, developing devices that you can program um, and, and, and that can be accessed and, 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 and they're already starting to be a really useful um, playground, a sandpit to uh, develop new techniques and new, new algorithms. And that's been incredibly exciting uh, uh, you know, to watch uh, even over the, over the past five years. Um, but, uh, but yeah, as to why it's hard to, to, um, uh, to, to, to improve it, 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 it's exactly this kind of, um, uh, challenge that that Chris mentioned that on the one hand, you you have to uh, incredibly isolate qubits so they they can't uh, in, uh, interact uh, with their environment, but you still need to couple them together. And so you're always trying to sort of find systems where you can get good interactions between qubits, but not um, uh, between their environment. And um, and I guess that another an, another reason why it's it's much harder. You know, the, it, it, there is the quantum a aspect, but there's also the analogy with uh, analog computers. So, you know, in the early days of of, of computing, people would use um, uh, yeah, would encode information as 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 you know, for example, any 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 potential voltage within some range, and that would be your information. Analog, sort of, I, I guess, of the way the sort of early um, audio processing took place. But but very quickly, uh, we realized that. 
um, this was very prone to errors. Nothing to do with quantum. It's just the fact that any noise would 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 change your information because it's it's analog. It can be in any of these of these states. And so we moved to digital information, ones and zeros. We said, look, your your information is either at this level zero or this level one, and any perturbation would would keep you around zero or one. Uh, but the problem is, you know, with quantum information. Um, you 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 have uh, in 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 many ways a, a kind of analog state. Any the, the qubit can be moved around um, uh, between these different uh, uh, points. It's actually points on a sphere. But any any perturb any any noise can can change the qubit state. And so, in fact, in the early days, people said, "Well, okay, this is a, a fa fabulous idea on paper, this quantum computing." But but because you can't do error correction, because you can't uh, do this kind of noise suppression that you do in digital computing, uh, then it's it's just an academic curiosity. And, and, the, and the major breakthrough uh, came from realizing that actually, no, because um, when you measure quantum systems, you project it onto onto one of these, uh, either onto the, the, the zero state or onto the one state, it, it is also um, uh, kind of digital in nature, and, and you can perform the same kind of error correcting methods. Um, and the downside is, that it needs redundancy. It needs many, many uh, copies of of a of a of a qubit in order to uh, uh, of a of an imperfect qubit in order to create a a perfect one. Uh, and that number can 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 range from uh, you know from tens to hundreds to even thousands of, of of copies of a qubit that you need in order to correct for these errors. Uh, and that means that if if you want to use this error correction, if you want to um, uh, perform this kind of digital uh, noise suppression, um, but but on qubits, for the first applications, you're going to need you know hundreds of thousands, if not millions of uh, of qubits, and and that's that's a uh, in, in many ways a, a daunting challenge. The, uh, the 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 noise levels you know uh, in qubits in the lab are already low enough to to satisfy that requirement, um, but you need many more qubits. So in a sense, the the the, the two the two uh, approaches being being uh, followed now in quantum hardware are you know uh, either to let's say uh, just focus on on scaling up the number of qubits and looking at ways to get towards the, the, that sort of millions of, of qubits that you need um, or uh, trying to suppress the errors even further so that you can get um, squeeze out some some useful um, quantum applications even without performing this error correction before the quantum computer um, falls over.